of x. X's again are what you put in, the g of x's in this case are what you, you get out. And here we'll have x's, and not g of x's in this case, but f of x's. Also, because these aren't straight, you need more than two points to graph it. You need more than three points to graph it. We're going to choose five points to graph it, okay? Uh, because we don't really know these shapes anymore, or at all, really. Um, once we get the shapes down, we kind of understand what these graphs look like. We're not even going to have to use a table. We're going to be able to shift things around. Uh, that will be in the next section, but, or two sections from now. But for right now, we're going to have to graph these with tables. That means we have to draw lots of points. Are you with me on this? So, we need positives, we need negatives, and we need five of them. What point are we for sure going to include in every one of these graphs, do you think? Zero. zero. For sure. Absolutely. So I'll definitely have a zero, but I want two to the right of zero and two to the left of zero. So two positives and two negatives. doesn't really matter which ones you choose. Pick something easy. So I'll pick like one and two, and negative one, negative two. Over here, I'm going to pick the same exact points. Let's see what we get when we plug these in. Just like we did with other tables, we'd have to take our x values, plug it into our function, and then see what we get out of that. So, with 2, we're going to plug 2 in. How much are we going to get out of that thing? Good, because 2 squared is 4. Okay. And we get ourselves a point. 2 comma 4. Are you all seeing where the 2 and the 4 come from? The 2 I made up, the 4, we get that from plugging that in. Raise your hand if you're okay on that 4. Okay, that we're squaring things. So what this says is, if you want to see the extra step, we'll do it one time. This says how we're getting this is we're taking the two, we're plugging it in, we're taking two squared, that's giving us four. We have two comma four. Okay, next one, we plug in one, how much do we get out of that, ladies and gentlemen? One. Good, so we have one comma one. We plug in zero, what do we get out of that? Zero. Nice. Zero squared is still zero. How about this one? Negative one, negative one squared. How much is negative one squared going to be? One. Good. Here's how this looks. I want you to pay close attention because this is going to be a slightly different on the right-hand side. When you plug in negative one to this expression where it says x squared, what it says is you're taking negative one in parentheses squared. You with me on that? It's taking all of negative one and squaring it. Negative one times negative one gives you positive one. So our point is negative 1 comma positive 1. Yes, no? Okay. Mm -hmm. Next one, very similar. Negative 2 squared, you're going to get how much? 4. Positive 4? Positive 4. Positive 4. Positive 4. Because you're going to take negative 2 times itself, that's a negative times a negative, it's a positive, you get negative 2 comma 4. Let you have your eye with that. See where those numbers come from. Let's graph it and see what this thing does. <coughs> in order to graph your line after, this is the hard part. This is really the hard part, actually plugging things in. Once you do this, it's just plotting points and then seeing what the shape is. First point that we did was 2 comma 4. I hope you all remember how to plot some points. 2 comma 4 means you go over 2, you go up 4, and that's where you put your point, right there. Next one we graphed was 1, 1. Well, that's not too bad. 0, 0, well that's just our origin. We'll put that down. Now the other ones, negative 1, 1. How do you get to negative 1, 1? Okay, so that should be, wow, this is weird, because right now it looks almost like a straight line. In fact, this, is, this isn't even a straight line yet. But if you were to just graph the side, this is why I said you have to have both sides. Look at the board right now, please. If you have just the side, doesn't it look like it might do that? It looks like it might do that. But once we graph the next point, if you didn't have your negatives, you would not see this next part. Once you graph your next point, well, that, that's, 
negative 1, 1. That's up here. Wait a second. That's not what we expected, right? Just by looking at the right-hand side, that doesn't look like that should happen. Next one is negative 2, comma 4. That's negative 2 up 4. That's like right here. So what in the world is this graph doing? Pass it this way. There you go. There you go. It's all good. Just roll sheet today, guys. I don't know what's going on today. <laughs> did the video in the morning or did the power screen in the morning and screwed everyone up, didn't I? All right. Still gets passed the same way. <clears throat> so we graph both sides of, of Y because we have positives and we have negatives. We want to see what happens on both sides. It changes right here. I mean, it's not going to be expected in some cases. Now, how in the world do you graph the rest of this? What do you do next? I don't want you to use straight lines. These are not straight lines. It's not like you should do this thing and go, oh, this is straight line, straight line, straight line, straight line. It's not going to be like a weird looking V. This is a nice curve. The shape of this graph is, if you've heard it before, it's called a parabola. Uh, it's a parabolic curve. It means it's, it's real smooth, makes like a U or a U this way. So in our case, here's what you do. Start at the origin or wherever your vertex is. The vertex will be the lowest or the highest point of your parabola. So right here, that's our vertex. Start there and make a nice smooth curve connecting the dots. Make it symmetrical on the other side. And that's about what we should get. Now, it's not the best looking problem I've ever drawn, but you, hopefully you have the idea that it's a nice smooth curve. Do you guys get that idea? Now, why does it climb so high? Look at that. If I plug in three, how much am I going to get? Okay, you're with me on the, on the idea, right? If I plug in 4, I get 16. If I plug in 5, I get 25. If I plug in 6, I get 36. 8, I'm already up to 64. It's going to climb very highly. It's, a, it's climbing really, really fast. So every number we take, we square that. It's going to go pretty quick, isn't it? How many will feel all right with this graph? The name of it is parabola. Say parabola for me. Parabola. Good, all right. Now, what's going to happen when we do this? This right here, this idea of putting a negative in front of our function, this, what this does to this graph, it's going to stick with it every time you see a negative in front of your function. Uh, this is part of our shifting, and this is going to go in our next section. We're going to take this and run with it. <clears throat> but we want to find out what happens here first. So, when I take g of x equals negative x squared and we plug in 2, here's how this looks. It says you're taking negative. Notice how the negative is not within parentheses. I need you to notice this, folks. That negative part of it, this one, is actually not being squared. This says negative 2 squared, like that. In your pre-algebra class, you were taught that if you don't have parentheses around the negative, this is very, I'll show you this one time, hopefully it sticks with you. This right here, negative 2 squared, is different than negative 2 squared. Do you believe me? You should, because I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but this is, this is actually true. This is negative 2 times negative 2. That's 4. This one says this is negative 2 times 2. This is negative 4. How you can think of it if you really want to is order of operations. What do you do first? Multiplication or exponents? This really is negative 1 times 2 squared. You could do that. You could do that here. You can't do that here. You could do that here and say, oh, exponent says 4, and then multiply by negative 1 if you want to. That's negative 4. Would it help to like put parentheses around the 2 um, to square? That way you like, forget that Like separate... this one? Yeah. You can if you'd like. I mean over both. So like you remember to do the exponents first and then multiply it by negative. If you want to, you can do that. Or just remember that if there's no if there's no parentheses, the negative is not with that number when you're taking it to the exponent. You can remember that way too. That's the way I like to do it. Exponent uh, with parentheses, yes, negative goes with it. Without parentheses, no. It's not going to go with it. Does that make sense to you? Uh -huh. So that's, that's our idea. So in our case up here, this is not going to be positive 4 again. This one is different than this one. These are two different things. That will be negative 4. What's the next one going to be then, do you think? So this is negative 1 squared or yeah, negative 1. 0, that's a nice one. I'll take care of that one for you guys, you know, so I don't want to waste your brain power here. If I do 0 squared, I'm going to be getting out 0. A couple other interesting ones. Let's see what this does. Watch carefully. Watch carefully. What negative 1 says is I have negative, 
That negative is this negative. You with me? Then I have x is negative 1. That one is in parentheses. That was my x value in this case. How much is negative, negative 1 squared? Negative 1. one. Negative 1. Very good. Because the negative 1 squared, this one, gives you positive 1, then you make it negative. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So this is negative 1. Lastly, we have a very similar situation. We we'll have negative 2, sorry, negative, negative 2 squared, negative from here, negative 2 being squared, and that's negative 4. So our points, I'll write them over here. We have 2 comma negative 4, we have 1 negative 1, 0, 0, negative 1, negative 1, negative 2, negative 4. Why don't you plot the points yourself? See what this thing does. So we've already done the hard part of actually finding the points. Now plot them on your graph, which is finally at the right coordinates. <coughs> So 2, negative 4 means write 2 down 4, put a point. 1, negative 1 means write 1 down 1. 0, 0, we're at our origin. Negative 1, negative 1, hopefully you got this. Negative 1, negative 1 is right here. Negative 2, negative 4, that's down here. How many people got those points like that on their graph? Good. Does it look similar to the one we just did? Yeah, I'll tell you something. Every time you have an x squared, every time you have a square, and that's your largest power, your graph is going to be a problem. Not sure if you're okay with that. Every time you get x squared. So all those things that we factored with the diamond problem, remember the diamond problem? Every one of those problems will be a problem. Every one of them, when we graph them, is going to be a problem. Isn't that kind of interesting? Every time. Whether it had the x and the back end of that or not, every single one of those is going to be a problem. Now, what's the difference between... Draw those arrows, it keeps going. What's the difference between this one that we drew with x squared and this one we drew with the negative x squared? What was the only difference that happened here? The direction. Yeah, was it a different shape? No. Same shape. In fact, if I took this one and I flipped it upside down, wouldn't it look exactly like that one? Mm -hmm. yeah. Tell you what, folks, I'm kind of previewing some information here, but that negative, all that negative does at the beginning of your function will take a graph and it's called a reflection. It will reflect it. It's like looking in the mirror. If you treat this like your mirror, these are reflections of each other. Not your head, you're okay with that. So that's what the negative will do. It says, oh, you have this function going this way? Nice. If I put a negative in front of it, it's just going to flip it. They can both touch the origin, don't they? Origin, origin. It's just flipped over. That's what that negative will do. We'll talk a little bit more about that in the next section. Shall we keep going? Kind of interesting, right? No longer just straight lines. Weird.